Jason. I'm Ashley and welcome back to Jaws Diaries. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, sorry about last week. Um, we had something pretty devastating happen, uh, so we had to take a week off. Um, but we're back and uh, I usually kick off with sobriety time. So it's uh, today is 222. 222. Ooh, two, two, two. Yeah, 222. Two, two. Two, two, two. So anyways, um, Following up for uh, last week's or two weeks ago's actions, uh, Ash, you were wanting to hike Hike. once or twice a week. Yeah, I did it. How do you feel? I mean, I feel great. I had an awesome time hiking every time that I did. My mom was in town. We went hiking. I love hiking. So I'm going to keep implementing that every week. Good. Mine was uh, to be there for Ashley. So let me, I, I will ask you, was I there for you when we were up in... Some for your dad's five year memorial, and yes, yeah, you were so amazing. It was like such an interesting situation because it was one during COVID, so nothing's open. Two, um, it was so hot, it was like 110 degrees every day, so we literally just hung out at the pool and spent so much quality time with family that it was really, really nice. We um had like kind of a little memorial day for my dad, and he passed away five years ago um july 11th so uh we went up to northern california we've been planning that for a while and um yeah you were amazing sorry that was like more into my check-in but no uh no i felt like i was i mean just for myself i mean obviously my goal is to be there for you so i wanted to get your in- insight mm-hmm. i feel like i was i was very present um and you know the reason why i made that my goal is because years ago there was many times that i was not there uh Physically, I was, but mentally and emotionally, it was checked out. So good. We both tackled. Uh, we very rarely both get our two for two on our actions. So that is awesome. Check in personally. Uh, usually, I do, but you don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I'm che- good. You are good. Check in personally. How you doing? Oh my gosh. Okay. It's just been like a very devastating week. We had some like really hard news for us after we got home from Northern California and um, it just kind of seems like a big domino. And then on top of it, our my salon got back, shut back down. So um, it's a lot of like triggers like thrown at me left and right and how to handle them. It was just a lot, it's just a lot going on. And I just don't, you know, I'm a very strong person and I know that about myself but I do feel like in some instances I'm not like I'm not like feeling emotions I'm kind of just like keeping busy to not feel them as much just because sometimes when things come at you like with so many punches it just seems like overwhelming so I just have to stay busy so I don't have to feel all those emotions all at once because I think that can kind of like put me into a downward spiral so I'm doing the best I can with what I'm given. So how was your week then with everything going on with all of like the bad news that has just been coming our way over and over again um i mean i've been doing okay you know i've had a lot of anxiety over the last week um you know just been a roller coaster of emotions just up and down uh trying to do as much physical exercise as i can you know get out of the heavy bag and doing that almost every day which has been really really good and been helpful but uh, it's just been a, a, a tough week. I mean, 2020 as a whole has just been a hard year. You know, it seems like when things are getting better, uh, then they just, something has to happen. Um, and I think a lot of it too is on my side is is trying to be supportive for Ashley through these things too, is because it's a lot of, a lot of what's happening, especially with her work stuff, because she's had so much put into work and so much time and energy with not only the salon that she works at, but the other stuff that she's doing. So, you know, just to kind of get, more news that things are being pushed back has has been hard to try to manage and balance that for her and also just be here on my side dealing with everything that i have to go through because i mean my the work that i'm doing has just been so busy Busy. lately just so so busy so i don't know i would just say my my week has just been a lot of anxiety um and it's, it's been challenging definitely well i think that kind of goes into our topic this week one of the things that i feel like leads into anxiety is expectations and how do you not have expectations for things how do you not like plan for something to happen the way that you plan for it and then all of a sudden it doesn't and that can be very disappointing you know i think everybody's faced with that sort of challenge regardless of what the topic is or what they're faced with but i think that's like really what i want to talk about today is expectations and anxiety and like 
how to not have expectations, I think. And that can even be in relationships, like having expectations for people that you feel like are always gonna live up to what you want them to be, but they personally can't ever be that for themselves. The, the mind that, you know, makes us spin with anxiety by wanting them to live up to our expectations or wanting that thing to live up to our expectations and it doesn't. And instead we, we stress and stress and stress, like, why did this happen? Like, you know, I want answers as to why. And sometimes things just happen because they just happen. Like we just don't understand. We never will. Um, I have to, I believe that God has a bigger plan for, for things when they don't work out for other opportunities to come our way. And, um, so what do you do when, I mean, when you start to feel like you're having expectations or some takeaways you can give? So I mean, it's, I think everybody's prone to naturally kind of create expectations around stuff. Yeah. And, and in a weird way too, like expectations to me can also be like a control. So a yeah, lot of 100%. that is like my codependency. So I'll have expectations about something and I'll want to control it. I want to control the outcome of something. And that's, I think like control is an expectation. I think just realizing that is so simple that, you know, like an expectation can be like a control fallacy in your brain of how you're wanting to control an outcome. And then realizing that and putting the focus back on you and realizing like, I don't have control over this expectation that I have for something. I don't have control about the outcome of whatever this is. I don't have control over another person. And like really reminding yourself that because that's where like the anxiety takes over is when you feel like you can control something that you can't control. And that is truly insanity. I'm the kind of person, like this topic's perfect because I'm the kind of person where if I have expectations about something and they don't come out to the outcome that I was expecting, I can get disappointed. I can obsess about what could have happened, um, which leads to my anxiety. And does that happen with you a lot? I mean, it definitely used to happen a lot more to me, uh, but I think through working a program, it's gotten better. Uh, and there's a, a saying that I really try to live by. It's like, if you want God to continue opening doors, get your hand off the handle. That's so cool. that's, it's, I really believe everything happens for a reason, you know, but I still struggle with expectations. You know, there's, I mean, I have ex expectations with you. I have expectations with the Lila family. And I also, it's just detaching from the outcome. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, cause oh, it's out of your control. Really good detaching from the outcome that's so important like oh, we have to say that another time but i think it's also too as acquiring more sobriety time and something that I, I always thought i was kind of codependent but i've really realized i'm really codependent uh in other areas i'm a fixer i want to basically and you know jump in and try to fix the situation it's like hey let's just focus on the solution so that's something that i need to be more mindful of is and i'm probably going to work more and you'll be able to help me is with codependency because all that kind of ties hand in hand. Yeah, I think like at the end of the day, like having expectations for something is totally normal. And if it doesn't work out, it can be a really big trigger for a codependent or somebody that's in recovery. And like, like you were saying, like take a step back and detach from that expectation is really important. So um, if anybody out there is struggling with that same thing, that's like a really good tip. I'm gonna actually use that tip because we didn't even, you didn't even give me that tip. So now I'm taking that with me. Well, there you go, you learned something new really every day. really good, I'm learning something new and it will help me throughout the rest of the week. Yeah, um, I think, so anxiety, I know we talk, I mean, is there any tips you have for that? Well, I mean, we've talked about it in like some of our previous episodes, like, if you feel an emotion to feel it, not obsess about it, which well, that's like what our problem is, obsessing about things, controlling things, wanting to fix things, breathing, meditating. Um, for me personally, like a big fixer, not fixer, a big natural high that I get for helping my anxiety is hiking and being outside. Um, Exercise for sure. Yeah, I've noticed a lot like sunshine for me is number one something that just really helps me it kind of makes me feel cocooned and like cozy when i'm sitting in the sun i don't know if anybody else feels like that but that's how i feel yeah i do too <laughs> like a for warm sure. like blanket so well i'd also like to hear what you guys do if you have anxiety i mean because that's something again going into this this week i've had a lot of anxiety you know through the last week and it's gotten better um you know, but all the things that I tried, some of them worked, some of them didn't. So we'd like to hear what you guys do. Yeah, I mean, so many people struggle with anxiety nowadays. It's not even a term that I ever, you ever really heard about in the 80s or 90s. No one talked about anxiety now. It's like everyone's got anxiety, like eight year olds have anxiety. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> let, us know, let, us, let us know what you guys do. Comment below. 
Uh, action for the week. What is your action I'm, for this week? I'm actually like gonna continue my action because I think it has been like the best therapy for me personally is hiking and being outdoors. So I'm gonna continue my action for this week and get outside once or twice this week um, and make sure I hike because I just love it. It makes me feel so good. After I do it, I just feel great. So that's yeah, gonna be I like my action. That. I like that. For me, as we talked about, uh, my schedule has kind of gotten out of whack and work has gotten so busy. Uh, and I think a while ago we told you guys how I was really restructuring my schedule Monday through Friday. I had like set hours, especially with COVID and I kind of got off that and I've seen myself kind of domino with, and I think that's definitely what's contributing to the anxiety. So I'm excited that Monday is tomorrow and I'm going to be able to have a fresh week, uh, and to really structure that. So my goal, uh, and action for the week is to structure my schedule. Um, I love that. Oh. Sorry, I was shaking my head. No, like, but I'm what? saying like, I love that. No, it's so interesting when you just said that. Maybe we could talk about this in another setting. But like, it's so interesting how basic life is when it comes to like having a schedule. It like goes back to having children. Like children thrive off a schedule. That's how they feel safe. That's how they feel secure. They have to have a schedule. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my gosh. In order to feel like, I just had like the driest cough. Sorry. So I'm like a three-year-old, I guess. I am uh, not no, feeling secure. No, no I just, agree though. Just, it is. It's, it's like true. back to basics. Like we teach all these things to our kids. Like it's so important, and it's such a. It's just we like psychoanalyze the same. stuff. It's we crazy. make we we basically can make things a lot crazier than than they really are, and it is. It's keeping it simple, uh, and I just I do way better when I have structure. And this last the last two weeks, I mean, my structure was completely thrown off, and I think it started about a month ago. But with the going to see your dad, the trips, the travel, I mean, everything just kind of got thrown off. And with COVID and certain things being open, not open, it's just been really hard. All I can do is is change what's going on with me. Uh, I can't, uh, you know, the environment is going to do what it's going to do. So I'm going to switch my structure of my schedule uh, and get back on track. And we'll follow up with you guys on that next week. Love it. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Have a week. What up guys? Thank you for watching another episode of Jaws Diaries. Hey, if you or a loved one is struggling and you guys need some direction, some insight, uh, and you're just lost, please fill out the link below and we'd be happy to help.